everyone. Welcome to another fantastic edition of the Cybersecurity Matters podcast. I'm your lovable co-host, Dominic Vogel. Uh, joining me remotely, uh, live from un, uh, the studio, is Mr. Christian Redshaw. Christian, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic now that I finally made it into the studio. <laughs> we had I'm glad our you made it in safely. <laughs> we, ha- we had our trials, but we're alive. That's the important. That's the important thing. I know you. Uh, you had quite the journey, my friend. But uh, I'm very excited for today's episode. Wondering if you can tell me who, who our special guest is today. Yes. So I'm excited to say that we have Meredith Shutter. She is the founder and CEO of something called the Protect app, which is a personal safety app, primarily for realtors, but hopefully many other applications to come. Doing big things to protect people's safety. That's uh, amazing. And I know she's based uh, here in Vancouver. Actually, I believe she's actually in Whistler uh, when, we're, when we're about to talk with her. So uh, enough about us. We'll pause, bring Meredith in, and here's to an awesome conversation. So stay tuned. Uh, Krishna and I will be right back with Meredith. Meredith, thank you so much for joining us on Cybersecurity Matters this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So we may or may not see some kids walking back and forth in the background or some young people. You're a, you're a parent. No. That's life. I'm a We're parent. We're good with it. Yeah. Whatever happens, go. happens. We never know. So uh, <laughs> also, you are a realtor and you also mm-hmm. have a, a company. So we want to mm-hmm. hear uh, about your life and we want to hear about your company. What's your, um, what's your background and what's your startup story? Sure. Um, So I've been in real estate for, I'd say, 13 years selling actively in Vancouver. And it was a job I went into right out of university. It was something I knew I wanted to do even as a child, if you can believe it. I was like that random kid who would take the real estate weekly and circle open houses on a Saturday and Sunday and stick them up on the fridge and say to my mom and dad, we got to go check out these houses. Um, Ironically, my parents still live in the exact same house that uh, I've lived in since I was about five. So uh, they didn't have the same bug as I did. But since my husband and I um, have bought and sold many, many, many times, it's just sort of in my DNA. I love the process. Um, Real estate is definitely my passion. And I love helping other people buy and sell and sort of fulfill their dreams and um, take them to the next step in their investment portfolio even. But I had a situation that, that really turned my life upside down about six years ago at an open house in Vancouver um, in a very expensive house owned by a friend of mine where I had two men walk into the front door at the very end of an open house so nobody else was in there and lock the door and one pushed me into the kitchen and um, I got really lucky because there was a young family in the backyard actually looking at the house who had walked along the side and they heard me and they came in and the two guys bolted and I was standing there fine for all intents and purposes, Mm. Um, but definitely shaken and realizing that something needs to change in this business, primarily in my business. Um, So it took me a while to figure out how it was going to shift. I knew I couldn't continue doing it the same way I was doing it. Um, It was safety is not discussed in the real estate sector at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's one of those businesses they encourage you to put your face on the side of a bus, have social media, tell the world where you are from two to four on a Saturday and Sunday all by yourself. Like you would never allow your teenage daughter to put on her social media that she's going to be at a park from two to four alone, come say hi. Um, I was picking up strangers, men and women at the airport, taking them to vacant condos, um, all sorts of things. So these are crimes of opportunity. And after this had happened to me, I started to talk to realtors more and more. I spoke to, I would say almost a thousand people victims of all different levels. Um, Some who've just been scared, a lot have been stalked, a lot have been lured into dangerous situations. Um, Families who've had loved ones assaulted, murdered, in fact. Mm. So I knew this was a real problem. Like this was something that needed to be tackled and discussed. And when you look at the real estate business as a whole, it attracts young professionals who are hungry. Um, I hate to say it, but a lot of it is sex sells. we're moving away a little bit from that, but, but it's the truth in a lot of these real estate brokerages. Um, these women are dressing up for the occasion. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like we can wear whatever we want, but we have to make sure that we're safe and we take care of ourselves. So I looked around for a solution. We, I needed to keep working. I loved what I was doing. My 
family relied on the income. We were two incomes. And um, so stopping work wasn't an option. So I just decided there was nothing out there that I liked that would had a positive spin on it that was about empowerment and community engagement and really created a culture of caring and togetherness for realtors. And I feel like that is our core values. We're not about being fearful or, you know, don't be scared to go to work and put on your three inch heels and um, just make sure that you take care of yourself and you mm -hmm. communicate with your community what you're doing and that the, the rest of the world knows that you're safe. Mm -hmm. That's a really important piece of it to really let people know we have realtors who put our logo on their e-signatures on their business cards just so new and potential clients know like don't mess with me like mm -hmm. you know i will i will go to the ends of the earth for you to get you this deal but mm -hmm. do not mess with me Absolutely. um so that's that's where we are today and we i put this team together and um our team is amazing uh, I always say work with people smarter than yourselves. And that is exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't come from a technology background. So I had to, I was, I was sort of the dreamer and then people reined me in. And so that's, that's where we are today. We're about two and a half years in business and um, things are moving along. The stories we hear really inspire us. Um, COVID has not been easy, obviously for anybody, but hearing the testimonials and how we change realtors lives and how we help them stay in the business longer than they normally would is what gets me up in the morning. That's phenomenal. I just wanted to follow up on something that you started out by saying, I'm so surprised that that story, that reality happened to you in a, in a country like Canada, in a place mm -hmm. like Vancouver. You would, you would think, you know, there are a lot more dangerous areas than, than mm -hmm. here where we are. Uh, that's pretty phenomenal. And I and you mentioned murder as well. Like, uh, I think I saw on your social media that there was a lady named Monique that had been abducted and then murdered. And she mm -hmm. was she was a real estate agent. I mean, that, that is unbelievably tragic. And you, you say that this has happened uh, on more than one occasion. Oh, more than you, more than the public, more than I care to know about or even had a glimpse into before I started this. So like I get interviewed quite often in the States because like yeah. and a perfect example was this spring, a gentleman, male realtor showed a condo, got in his car after, now this was, I wanna say near Chicago, got in his car, was shot in the face by the buyer, sat in his car and bled out for 23 hours and was dead when they found him. But they figured he was alive for 23 hours. And it's one of those situations, like if he had had our app, which is all based on timed alerts or any app, like, let's face it, like we're not, we're not the only beast out there. And it's more important that everybody feels safe and secure and looks after themselves than uses protect. But we do offer the service. And if he had set a timed alert for 20 minutes and God forbid, if that had happened, his friends and family and coworkers would have known where he was. They would have been able to pinpoint that he was in trouble and gone and saved his life. So these, this thousand people or however many you spoke to, were these local here in Vancouver or were they kind of all, all over? I reached okay. out all over. Um, I started to join sites and websites and I was, you have to remember that I was in a bit of a, like I wasn't raped and obviously not murdered and, you know, assaulted, yes, but very mildly, you know, if, if you were to look on the whole scale of things, but at the same time, I was standing in a home of people who loved me and cared for me because as realtors, we represent people who we're usually friends with or have some connection. And nobody wants to think that this could happen in their home or that this could happen to their realtor in their home, even worse, or in their child's bedroom in their home. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many layers to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, at the end of the day, we're a, we're a B2B product. So we work with enterprise customers. We're not available on the app store to be purchased by the individual realtor. Uh, Cause our, like I'd said, our mandate is really empowerment for all. And so companies purchase us, give it as an employee benefit to their people. And then our job is to educate in that with, you know, different campaigns about how the app works, why it's important, other tips and tricks to keep yourself safe in the workplace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass uh, that, it over to Dominic. 
Yeah, no, and I, I find that so interesting, Amir, that, that you, you, you took a life experience and you, you saw that others were being affected and, and like you said, they're to, to, a, to a, a, a higher degree and being able to at least put something out there that could at least help the situation. Now, um, I, I, I'm curious, so you mentioned that the uh, realtor firms are the buyer, so it's a B2B product. Uh, so yes. Do the, do the firms then, do they... Do they proceduralize it or uh, how do they tend to, to, to implement it or is it just sort of a um, whoever wants to use it can use it yeah. again maybe does it depend does it depend on, on, on the realtor firm Good question. So it really does depend on the real estate firm. So think of us as a really an employee benefit. Um, Remax, for example, Remax Western Canada has been incredibly supportive and they use us in their collateral for recruiting other realtors. You know, we offer Protect, we take your personal safety, really important. So we offer you this tool. Now, is it mandated? No, it's too difficult to do because everybody's cell phone is their own personal possession, but it is a tool that's available. So on many levels, like I don't like to say the word insurance, but it is an insurance from the brokerage perspective that they've offered all the correct tools. And really our job and something we're deeply committed to is the education of our mostly realtors, but we do work with healthcare and other sectors as well with whoever the end user is. Mm. So the end user isn't our customer, but we are committed to making sure they understand our product and they're what's really important. So we track how it's used, when it's used, and then we can go back to the employer and say, you know what, you have 68% adoption. This is where people, this is the time frame people are feeling unsafe. So we can provide those data points, but really our clients are the end user, but they're not the ones who flip the bill, but they're the ones we care about. Um, right. So it's all about education. And we have the best customer service team you could imagine. Like we're there to pick up the phone you know, for something as simple as a, a buck or two a month, we will actually answer the phone, walk somebody through the app. If we're having any problems, we will fix it. We will remedy it and and send them on their way, feeling like they're looked after. That's that, that, that's amazing, and and you know, in, in your role as being the that um, that dreamer, that visionary, like like you mentioned there, um, walk me through sort of the. Um, uh, sort of the uh, that that process for yourself like, is that similar to being a realtor? Is that a different skill set that you've had to um, to strengthen hmm. and build? T tell me about sort of the, the difference between those two experiences. Yes, I would say it's been a really interesting learning curve because real estate I can do any day of the week. Learning the tech sector was very different for me, although. I have a really good sense of it now. I understand all these different platforms that we use and I have to, I have to have my finger on everything that we do, um, you know, with advice and suggestions from other people in the team, of course, who, who know stuff better than I do. Um, but a lot of our functionality and features were initially started because I dreamt it. And I kind of was like, if you dream it, we can build it mentality. And then as the process went along, we started to get a lot of feedback from realtors. We were asking a lot of questions. We were giving it out for free to a ton of people. We still have a champion file, in all fairness. If somebody was to email me, I get lots of realtors who write me and say, hey, I love what you're doing. I have an 18-year-old daughter who's off to university. How do I get this for her? And because we can't sell it to them, I happily onboard them free of charge. You know, Try it, use it, let me know what you think as one of our champions and ambassadors. So that's a sidebar. Um, and we took feedback from all these people and then we actually scaled the app back. So instead of all the features that I initially thought were so amazing, we had all this advice that, you know what, pare it down. If we, and we all know that and it sounds easy to think of hindsight, but a simple app that's easy to use easy to turn on and syncs with your calendar and contacts is much more likely to get adopted than something that has 80, 18 features. People just don't need it. So we scaled it way back on about version three. So that's where we are today. And it's great. And we're still taking feedback. And whenever I do office meetings and I speak to groups of realtors, I always say, send me feedback. Like if there's a feature that I'm missing here or something you think we should do better, I mean, that's what we're here for. Um, so yeah, that's a really good question. I, I, I it's been, a, yeah. it's been an interesting roadmap. Like, believe me, like I, I'm taking advice from everybody and just learning, learning as I go a lot of the time, you know, no ego involved. If, if somebody thinks something's terrible, let's fix it. I yeah. love your inf infectious energy. You know, I think that, that uh. that's super, super yeah. awesome. And, um, I, I heard Christian there, but I, if, uh, if I may, I have one more quick question, uh, then I'll mm -hmm. look back to you there, uh, uh, Christian. Um, in terms of 
uh, again, like maybe future plans or future growth. I know you said there um, that it's meant for realtors. Do you foresee this potentially uh, moving out into uh, other sectors, other industries, mm-hmm. um, where maybe people are working alone? Um, just, just curious in terms of maybe a, a, a roadmap, mm-hmm. what, what, what you may be thinking for, for future growth for, uh, for the Yeah, app. absolutely. And we do. Like sort of organic growth, we have health centers on board um, who send healthcare practitioners into the community. Um, we've had retail look at what we're doing. So 100%, we're really limited by people at this point right. and really picked picking our sort of our beachhead market and running with it and wanting to prove ourselves mm-hmm. out in that market, which was an obvious fit being that I know the market really well. Um, and, but that's by all means, like I look at sororities and fraternities and universities and these people, they, they need something like what we offer. And what's cool about us is we white label everything. So it's all custom branded colors, logo, everything. So it reiterates a company's brand power every time one of their people sends out a, hey, would you be in my protector squad? I need help here. This is where I am today. So it's an important brand recognition piece, as well as will API integrate. So if a company has an existing application that they use for like hotels, for example, we look at the housekeeping staff and the room service staff as really a next market. Do you know that 71% of housekeepers and women who deliver food and room service have been assaulted in North America? Like these numbers are unbelievable. And the scariest part are these are usually women who have mouths to feed at home, often immigrant women, often women who won't rock the boat because they need the work. And these women need our support and they need to feel like they're part of a team. And the studies show that if, if employees feel like they're part of a team or cared for, even if they're not making high hourly dollars, they're more likely to stay and feel connected to their teammates. So that's part of what we do is really an HR benefit as well as an employee benefit. So yes, to answer your question, there's definitely markets. We get people all the time. We're like, you should enter this. There's no reason the 7-Eleven staff shouldn't have this. We're limited by people who are out there hustling. Now, when I look at our future plan, I would love to consider us a native application on some of the major telephone providers. I think that could be awesome if we handle the personal safety on, say, TELUS or Bell and every cell phone that gets sold has a personal safety component. And maybe it's very rudimentary and people have to upgrade to get premium service, you know, just to show I think we're moving in that direction. And that's one blessing with COVID is, yes, it's it halted and slowed a lot of our businesses, but it also gave us all time to reflect, figure what's important. And I think companies more than ever are realizing their people are their greatest asset, like beyond, far, far beyond, especially if people are working from home and not creating yeah. that culture of around the coffee room, water water box, whatever it's called. You have to keep people engaged on different levels. I think water yeah, cooler so is what you were looking for. There. Water cooler. Was water I showing my age there with the water box? <laughs> like what is a water box? <laughs> Am I 75? I'm going, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to go with water. I'm only 43. I'm only 43. <laughs> hey, you and me both. Uh, Are you? Nice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sweet. Um, you look great for 43. <laughs> and to you. Um, oh, well, I'm, you I'm had to say in. that. I fed you in that. I had to. Whether I meant it or not, I had to say that. Exactly. Um, exactly. But on, on a more serious note, I want to get into yeah. the nitty gritty of the app and how okay. it works. So let's rewind to when you were in that horrible situation with those mm-hmm. unsavory characters coming into, I think you said open house. Yep. How would the app have worked for you there to, to save your bacon if those, those yep. that family was not in the yard? Yes. So a couple of things I would have had on my please remove your shoe sign, which all realtors have that sits outside the door. I would have had that this realtor is protected with the protect app. So that would have been my first barrier of entry and would have given people the first clue. Um, Number one. So maybe they would have moved on right from then. Once they'd walked in, there's that feeling and men and women get it, that gut feeling that something's wrong. Like I did a Ted talk a year or two ago and my hands got sweaty as soon as those guys walked into the room. And it was like, there was nothing wrong with these guys. They were, they looked like normal, mid twenties guys, but I, my gut told me something was wrong. So had I had the application at that moment, I would have helped press the help button, which is in the center of the app, always running. If you have it running in the background, just a quick help, 
it would have alerted my friends and family and I would have been able to show them that I have a help button on my phone. Mm-hmm. I use it actually quite often if I go into a dark elevator with people, mm-hmm. I'll just hold my phone and it says help in the middle. Well, mm-hmm. nobody's going to mess with you with a giant help button on your mm-hmm. home screen. Um, so that's one thing. And then God forbid if it had gotten worse and I was knocked over the head or if those people weren't in the backyard and I had been knocked unconscious or something happened, I had the alert set on my phone. I would have had the alert set for, for the set amount of time. So mm-hmm. at four o'clock, if I hadn't checked in, my friends and family and everybody who was my protector squad would have all of a sudden got a direct link to me. So we have something called the communication room and this is sort of our secret sauce. So this is what's been patented. So as soon as an alert goes out, all your protectors get sent a link just on their phone and they don't have to have the app at all. We're completely like only one side of the parties have to have the app. So they would get a link that says Meredith needs your help. They click on it and it opens a web portal that would show a map to my direct location and how to get to me, a Google map, easy. Mm -hmm. Plus it would show all the communication between all the protectors. So the protectors may not know each other. I might have Dominic as a protector, my mom, you two don't know each other, but now my mom can say, hey Dominic, have you seen Meredith lately? And it's all recorded in the communication room. And then if, and then I can even chime in on my communication room. So if I was stuck in a closet, I could chime in and say, I'm in the front closet, somebody help me. And I can see who's calling the police and who's bringing me, bringing me home. And then I can also save things like photos and notes. And that was something a realtor had suggested early on is if we could save photos on the app that can be downloaded and printed later and handed to a police officer, if required, that would be super cool. So now, you know, if somebody pulls up and is unsavory, you can actually take a photo of some sort of evidence in the application, save it there and have it just in case, Mm -hmm. you know, little things like if somebody was to grab my phone in the app and say, what's happening here, if they touch the phone and they're not me or they don't have my eyes, because if we have, I have facial recognition on my phone, it actually will take a selfie of them and post their face on the wall. So now all my friends and family have a, have photographic evidence of who potentially is causing me harm. So all these little things we thought through, Um, And you can extend the timeline, like if four o'clock comes and I'm totally fine and happy, no harm, no foul, I can either end it or add another 15, 20 minutes, no big deal. Um, And then once I'm safe and I've logged out with my thumbprint or my face or my code, whatever you decide, um, Mm -hmm. you have the option to let your protectors know that you're safe or it just ends. You know, some people don't want to let everybody know that they're fine. They just want it to end. And that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. You even wow. have the option when an event begins. If I was starting an open house at two to four at two mm-hmm. o'clock, when the event's beginning, I could send an alert to my community saying, this is where I am. I'm yeah. at an open house and I expect to be done by four. You can let people know that in the app with just the click of one little button as well. It's all automated. Um, so it's really easy to use and it That's syncs awesome. to your calendar and contacts. So you can set it up well in advance and it pulls right from your calendar. So there's really nothing to do. It's not an mm-hmm. extra step because we know that realtors are busy. Yep. innately don't want anything extra to do. You know, they're busy setting up their open house. Um, so we just try and keep it really simple. Mm-hmm. I keep thinking about more high crime, dodgy areas. And I think about parents, 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 because I'm yeah. a parent of a toddler and a teenager. Mm-hmm. And this is definitely something that I would want. So, so yeah. just a question for you. How, um, uh, how long has this been in production for? In other words, how, how long have you had people using this app? About three years, including beta. So okay. about three years. And have you had any s- s- stories of things happening and, and crime being prevented as a, as a result of that? Oh, yeah. Yep. We've had testimonials. We've had people write us and be like, you won't believe it. Um, I was totally freaked out and I pressed the help button and then this guy left me alone. Or, you know, we've had lots of realtors say that it's, it's the best deterrent that they could ask for because they'll let clients know right away that they have this. Also, we've had realtors say they've won listings because they'll go into a listing appointment and say, you know, I'm also, just so you know, I'm a safe realtor. I have the Protect app. Nothing terrible will happen in your home. And what homeowner wouldn't say, great, you're hired. You know, I never thought of that. And it's, I think the, the light bulb goes off for a lot of people when you start talking about the real estate sector being, you know, somewhat dangerous and unsavory and, and sort of, opportunistic for predators and they go, ah, yeah, you're right. Like it's, you're so open to dangers. So we've had lots of cool situations over the, over the years. Um, yeah. So we get lots of emails and phone calls. And when we go to women back in the day, like, remember when we used to be able to go to conferences, um, we'd have lots of people say to us, 
Remember, I was in Vegas in March at a big conference. It was awesome. Um, and people come up to us and say, you won't believe this. Like, this is exactly why I'm with my brokerage for something as simple as like literally like we're not charging an arm and a leg. We're as, we're as low as a dollar to three dollars a month per employee, depending how many people you have. Wow. It's hard to say no. Yeah, to. It's not an expensive. Yeah, as a risk or risk management minded person, this this fits so perfectly into my way of thinking. So, Meredith, how do people find you and how do they find out about your app if they want more information? Good question. I'll try not to be a secret agent. Um, I mean, LinkedIn's really good. We have a really great website, Protect Smart Personal Safety. Um, if somebody was to contact us on Protect, it actually goes to a bunch of the team and it's usually me who responds. Um, you know, some other team members will ask if they should respond, but I usually take it. Um, I enjoy talking to people and getting a sense of what their needs are. And we're, we're essentially a startup, right? So it's important that we're, that I'm involved on every level. Um, so probably our website, LinkedIn, I'm on social media, you know, I'm not hard to find in all Easy fairness. <laughs> yeah. Come to Whistler. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Yeah. Once these lockdowns are over, we'll we'll make our way over there. We'll we'll throw the throw the chains on and the snow tires and head uh, to Whistler. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> yes, we could go for dinner outside of our family circle. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah. One one day uh, soon. One day soon. One day soon. We're, 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 uh, Chris and I are so grateful to you for taking time of your busy day to to chat with oh. us. I mean, that, that was a very very uh, engaging conversation you know, and i think that's thank absolutely you. amazing what what you and your team are, are doing that's, that's super super cool thank you i appreciate what you guys are doing it's awesome i'm going to start listening to everything you you have out there the dream team <laughs> the security dream team <laughs> well, we, we have a full year's worth of content so yeah, there's a lot to catching up to on those snowy oh, days gosh. There in, in whistler but, <laughs> but sweet uh, awesome thank, Thank you again so, so, so much. Very much appreciated. And um, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll chat again soon. But uh, thank you again great. for taking time uh, to be on the podcast. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Wow. Awesome. Awesome conversation. Krishna, I need to know your immediate thoughts on that conversation we had there with Meredith. Well, being somebody that is always thinking about what could go wrong in life or in business, uh, this just fit this her product fit me so well and she's doing so many great things in the world i think what struck me was i didn't realize the the dangers of the real estate profession and literally what this app is going to do is it's going to save people's lives and protect their personal safety and what i'm hoping is that it can be applied to you know parenting and healthcare and all kinds of different industries because this is the right direction yeah, very well said, my friend. I, I, I really don't have anything to, to add to that. You know, I think we were both uh, very grateful for Meredith for taking time to, to chat with us. And I think that was an absolutely uh, very engaging conversation. And uh, as always, I want to thank our loyal listeners and viewers for taking time out of their day uh, to spend 20 minutes with us uh, uh, on the podcast. I want to remind everyone, uh, if they're curious about the other uh, podcasts under the Conversations That Matter banner, uh, please be sure to check out the Conversations That Matter YouTube page. Uh, as always, thank you again for listening. Be well, be safe, be awesome, and we'll catch you again next week on the Cybersecurity Matters podcast. Mm -hmm.